This is the President of the United States, Joe Biden. After taking office, Biden has eased immigration controls, ended the Trump administration's Remain in Mexico policy for asylum seekers, and sent a bill to Congress that would give a path to citizenship to millions of undocumented immigrants. Unsurprisingly, this has set in motion a surge of illegal crossings at the United States' southern border. And on March 16th, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, said in a statement, We are on pace to encounter more individuals on the southwest border than we have in the last 20 years. And of course, <laughs> there's only one person to blame, former President Donald Trump. Uh, to put it succinctly, the prior administration dismantled our nation's immigration system in its entirety. We are dig digging ourselves out of a broken and dismantled system. As we dismantle various of uh, the Trump administration's policies of cruelty. And what we are seeing today is the consequence of four years of dismantling every system in place to address this with humanity and compassion. We are dedicated to achieving and quite frankly are working around the clock to replace the cruelty of the past administration uh, with an orderly, humane, uh, and safe immigration process. But while several immigration policies from the Trump era were reversed, they forgot to replace it with something orderly, humane, and safe. And thanks to the Biden administration, there are now four to 5,000 illegal crossings per day. But we don't have a crisis, guys. It's a challenge. Uh, I think there is a challenge at the border that we are managing. We do not have a crisis at the border. How is this not a crisis? Um, I have explained that quite clearly. I, um, uh, we are challenged at the border. This is um, um, a challenge. So how did we get here? Well, let's go back into history a little bit. According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, during the first six months of 2019, there were over 596,000 people apprehended between ports of entry on the southwest border. That's a 121% increase over the same period in 2018. Now, in many cases, these people are not immediately expelled from the country. By law, they are allowed to request asylum. 18 U.S. Code Section 1158 allows any alien who is physically present in the United States or who arrives in the United States, irrespective of such alien status, to apply for asylum. So basically, anyone who successfully crosses the border and gets caught can immediately throw their hands up and request asylum, whether it's a valid request or not. We have a, a long tradition of generous asylum, which has been frankly swamped by uh, a lot of fraudulent claims. And that what that does is it clogs up a system for the legitimate claimants. And in 2019, the surge of illegal border crossings and fraudulent asylum claims resulted in hundreds of thousands of migrants being held in detention centers that were bursting at the seams. So on July 16, 2019, the Department of State and the Department of Homeland Security implemented an interim final rule that effectively stopped the bleeding. This was also referred to as the Remain in Mexico policy. Here's how the rule worked. Let's say that a migrant claims to be escaping gang violence in Guatemala. Once that person crosses the border into Mexico, that person is out of harm's way and therefore should apply for asylum in Mexico. Because asylum is about safety and not about shopping around for the country that's gonna give you the best deal. This new regulation required that if you passed through a country before reaching the US, that you had to apply for asylum in that country first. And if you didn't, you would be ineligible to apply for asylum here. Now let's say that the migrant from Guatemala was denied asylum in Mexico. Then and only then would they be eligible to apply for asylum in the United States. If the migrant was from Mexico and crossed the southern border into the United States, they would be allowed to make an asylum claim since the US was the first country that they crossed into. And unlike what Democrats and activists would have you believe, this was not done out of cruelty to immigrants. It was done for a number of reasons. First, because of a giant backlog. 
This regulation will go a long way to helping us clear our over 300,000 case asylum backlog and also the immigration judges over in the Department of Justice are closing in on a 900,000 case backlog and, uh, and as I said, being swamped at the border plays a big role in this. In the month following the new policy, border encounters were down 56% from a record high in May. By January 2020, border encounters were down to a low of 36,500. But unfortunately, those numbers slowly started rising again, exacerbated by the global pandemic. But there wasn't a surge until after Joe Biden took office. Was it a mistake not to anticipate this surge? Well, first of all, there was a surge the last two years in, in, in 19 and 20, there was a surge as well. Fact check false. While there was a surge in 2019, Trump's immigration policies did a lot to stem the flow of illegal border crossings. And while the remain in Mexico policy was in effect, there was no surge in 2020. And that's also according to Secretary Mayorkas. We have experienced migration surges before, in 2019, 2014, and before then as well. Since April 2020, the number of encounters at the southwest border has been steadily increasing. So if there was a surge in 2020, you can bet that Mayorkas would have mentioned it because it would have made Orange Man look bad. Now, when it comes to the Biden border surge, there has been some mixed messaging. We are not saying don't come. We are saying don't come now because we will be able to deliver um, a safe and orderly process to them uh, as quickly as possible. In other words, migrants stand back and stand by. But then in President Biden's interview with former Clinton operative George Stephanopoulos, Joe had this to say. It's going to take some time, though, to get those policies in place again. Do you have to say quite clearly, don't come? Yes, I can say quite clearly, don't come. And what we're in the process of getting set up, and it's not going to take a whole long time, is to be able to apply for asylum in place. Now, this is new. Currently, you can only apply for asylum within the U.S. or at a U.S. port of entry. But according to Joe Biden, that's going to change. So don't leave your town or city or community. We're going to make sure we have facilities in those cities and towns run by DHS and also access with HHS, the Health and Human Services, to say you can apply for asylum from where you are right now. Make your case. We'll have people there to determine whether or not you are able to meet the requirement you qualify for asylum. So essentially, we're going to be setting up travel agencies within other countries. I'm sure that their governments won't resent us at all. That's the best way to do this. But is it really? In addition to that, while we also change the circumstances on the ground in those communities, you're going to diminish the reason why people want to leave in the first place. And that means that Biden wants to start sending taxpayer dollars to Central American countries again, because somehow it's our responsibility to help fix their problems. Anyway, here's former United States ambassador to Mexico, Roberta Jacobson. The president has committed to seeking $4 billion over four years to address the root causes of migration. As part of that plan, we will address the causes that compel individuals to migrate, including improving governance and providing a foundation for investment and economic opportunity, strengthening civilian security and the rule of law. The United States going to other countries to try and persuade them to improve their governance has never worked in the past. But don't worry, I'm sure it's totally going to work out differently this time. Speaking of surges, in the last two months, thousands of children under the age of 18 have crossed the border without being accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. These children are designated as unaccompanied minors. Under the Trump administration, unaccompanied minors were generally sent back to their home country. This was part of a zero tolerance policy that dissuaded family members from sending their children off on the long and dangerous journey to America and putting them in the hands of coyotes and other human traffickers that were paid large sums of cash to smuggle them over the border. What do you do with an unaccompanied child that comes to the border? Do you repeat what Trump did? Do you take them from their mothers? But if a child is crossing the border without their mother, how are you taking them from their mother? Eh, whatever. So while the Trump administration's goal was to discourage this practice, the Biden administration is widely encouraging it. I know, you're shocked. 
and most of them come with a phone number. So what we're doing is we're putting together an entire organizational structure so that within seven days, you're able to get in the phone, contact that number, find out whether there is a mother or a father, whether it is safe, whether it is a secure circumstance to get the child to that adult. According to Homeland Security, in more than 80% of cases, that adult is a family member in the United States. And in more than 40% of those cases, it's a parent or legal guardian. And the dirty little secret is that the majority of these family members are in the United States illegally. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Send an unaccompanied minor across the border and Joe Biden will do everything he can to place them here in the United States. And of course, there are way too many UACs being sent over, and the Biden administration can't process them in the timely manner that is mandated by federal law. And let's just say that it's led to a crisis. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant a challenge. Speaking of which, in his statement on the border challenge, Secretary Mayorkas also claims that we are expelling most single adults and families. And while that statement is technically true, it's also technically misleading. When looking at the US CBP statistics from February 2021, the total number of single adults and family units members encountered at the border was 90,844. And of those, 72,023 were expelled under Title 42. That's a 79% expulsion rate. However, if you only count the family unit members, US CBP shows that only 42% of family units were expelled in February. So that means if you come across the border as a family unit, you have a 58% chance of being allowed to stay. So of course people are gonna try. I mean, who can blame them? The idea that Joe Biden said come, because I, I heard the other day that they're, they're coming because they know I'm a nice guy and I won't do they're what Trump did. This. Yeah. I wonder where they got that idea. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Oh, so it was Joe Biden who said to surge the border and that those seeking asylum should come and be heard. But not his fault. Totally orange man bad. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, sharing, and slamming that like button. Want some Clown World stuff? Check out the link to my merch store in the description and then follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run and on Instagram at Don't Walk Run Productions. A special thanks to Poofy for all of her help with this week's video and you can follow her on Twitter as well. Again, thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.